Hallelujah. Y'all brought up your conditions of Almighty Yahweh. That name is not given, or condition, that term is not given unto every man, but only a chosen elect people that we are elected unto Almighty Yahweh. How are your lives tonight? Hallelujah. Hasn't Yahweh given us an opportunity to enter once again into his bayat? Why? To barak him. To praise him. To give todah unto his name. Hallelujah. For he is worthy of all the praise and all the honor. He is worthy of your life, your essence. Hallelujah. All we have and all that we are, we give it unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. What I want to talk tonight is basically about being thankful. Just thankful. What do we base giving todah, todayah, being thankful unto Yahweh? What do we base that on? Is it by means of our meager possessions? Is it based upon that only? It plays an element, Kedusha. But what is the rooted thing that allows us to give told out unto Yahweh? Is it just the breath he has given us? Is it the Ruach he has given us? Where does the Toda or the thankfulness or Yada, not just knowing Yah, it also means to shout out or to proclaim with a loud voice that we know in whom we believe and who we trust in. And from the bowels of that, do we cry out, Toda unto Yahweh. Just being thankful. Not just having clothes on our back, shoes on our feet, because those things will fade away. And what will we have then? Not just food on our table, meat to eat, drink, because those, those things also pass away. But there's one thing that will never pass away, and that is the Dabar, the, the, the Yahweh speech, his Torah, that has been, if I may say, built in our nephesh. That is the essence from which we should draw upon, the Torah of Yahweh, the blessings of Almighty Yahweh, his promises. That's all that we have, Kedusha, Yisra'ya. It's not in the elements, yet they play a part, because we know that Yahweh provides all things. But not only do Yahweh provide, but he also takes away. Should we barak his name? Did not Dawi experience this? Did not Job experience this? That Yahweh, you give all these things unto us to sustain this physical life. But yet, there is something deeper than just what you have provided. The knowledge of also knowing that you will also take away. In those times, do we find the words or the strength? It takes that. The amuna, the faith to say, told out unto Yahweh. How deep? Do our Toda or our Imuna or what we have believed, even in Yahshua HaMashiach, what is it based upon tonight? I want you to search your lair. Hallelujah. Is that not what happens or what takes place when you go to a physician? He, not only does he search, you may give him an idea of what may ails you, but there has to be a searching. He must examine you. And that is a process of what this tonight is about. Emit truth. That Yahweh, during the, the space of seven days, as we become closer and closer to his Shabbat on the Shabbat, yeah. this is a time where we examine ourselves. Beautiful. We can come into his bayat and be examined. Yeah. So as we stretch across the table tonight, this is of Yah, and then the two-edged sword of Almighty Yahweh fillet our nephesh open, what lies there? Does he find a healthy organ? or healthy Ru'ah in the house of Yisra'ah, or does he find canker there? Does he find the cholesterol of sin clogging the veins of the life that should be pouring into the nephesh, Yisra'ah? Hallelujah. Why do we todah, yah? Why do we yada, yah? What is the essence of that? Well, we should dig a little bit tonight concerning thankful. 
Hallelujah. Yadon. It is also a name that means thankful. And this was one of the builders of the walls of Jerusalem. He was a Israelite. Isn't that a beautiful name for one of our, our sons to be called? Thankful or Yadon? That should, in the essence, flow, Kedusha, from us. Because we have been transformed from the life of flesh, if I may say, this fleshly way of thinking that because I can gain or I can have, I can be thankful and happy. No, because the Ruach has come in, we understand what truly the essence of being thankful is, and that is knowing Yahweh and Yahshua HaMashiach and his Torah. I want to read an a excerpt or just a clip out of Wisdom chapter 17, verse 18, and also continuing into uh, chapter 18, verse 1 through 4. And this is basically concerning how Yahweh has brought Yisrael out of Mizraim. And even though you must understand a people that have been in bondage for many years. So in that bondage, you have children being born that was not used to the outside world. All they knew was everything they saw within the walls of Mizraim, Egypt. So the experience that they had or that they will have or that they had in the wilderness was a new experience for them all, basically. This is an experience for Yisrael. Yahweh has brought us out of Mizraim into the wilderness. Why? That he may purge out all the things as Zakain ben was expressing to us that is in us that is not of him, even if it means destroying the flesh. Even if it means cutting off those that have been brought out. You're not going to hinder Yahweh and his plans. Hallelujah. That which he has spoken, he will accomplish it, conditions of Yahweh. So in that understanding, can you imagine the fear, the turmoil, the going into a strange land, the things that they heard, that even the chirping of birds, as I may read, they they wasn't used to that in Mizraim. So there was a fear factor there. There was doubt there. Unassurance, not knowing where they would go, but yet there was assurance. Yet Yahweh sent them fire by night in a pillar of cloud by the daytime, even allowing the sun. And the sun did not beat upon them, Yisrael. Yahweh is not going to allow the brightness of Yahshua to beat us down. But it should be a light that shall lead us in darkness. It's the pillar of cloud that leads us. It's the fire of Yahshua HaMashiach that gives us light even in darkness. So let me read this, hallelujah, in wisdom. It said, whether it came a whistling wind or a meliodus or the sound of the birds and the wide spreading branches or the rhythm of the violently rushing waters, it says, all this noise, things that they weren't used to hearing in bondage, or the harsh crash of the rocks hurled down from the mountains. Or the unseen running or the leaping of animals. Can you imagine going through the wilderness? And you hear this rustling in the bushes and it gives you a kind of a panic because it's not something you're not used to. Yeah. And then behold, it's just a wild animal running through. Running, leaping animals or the sound of the most savage roaring beast. And I believe Yisrael seeing those things that they go through the wilderness. Why? Because it is the wilderness. Out in the tundras. Out in the, uh, the, 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 the woods or the wilderness. Yeah. Or an echo thrown back from, a ho- from the hollow of the mountains. It paralyzed them with terror. Can you imagine that, Israel? Well, For the whole world was illuminated with a brilliant light. There was in a place that they had never seen before, and yet their surroundings was illuminated because it was new unto them, Yisrael. Visualizing, understanding, and getting used to everything that took place took time. And it was engaged in 
unhindered work. While over those men alone, alone, the heavy night was spread in the nighttime, in the night season. An image of the darkness was destined to receive them. But still heavier than darkness were they to themselves. Can you understand being in that kind of bondage? The fear that the soldiers were after them, even on their heels, being taken back, traversing through the wilderness. This is something that it takes the hand of Almighty Yahweh to comfort, to assure and to lead us. And even through it all yet, though they did not understand everything that was taking place, yet they was thankful. Let, let, let me read on. Yeah. While, over, while over those men alone, heavy night was spread, and the image of the darkness was destined to receive them, but still heavier than darkness were they themselves. Yes, but it says this, but for your Kadesh ones, there was very great light. There was very great light in the midst of the Kadesh, Kadesh ones, the righteous, those that Yahweh had deemed right out of Mizraim. And it says their enemies heard their voices but did not see their form. So there was a protection amongst the house of Israel that even the enemies could not see them. They heard them. There was close on them. But they could not see them. Don't you know that the enemy, Satan, he cannot see Israel. He knows that we're out here. But yet Yahweh has covered his house. He has covered his people. Hallelujah. Isn't that enough to be thankful for? That even though Satan, he's destroying nations here, people there, here looking for the chosen Zeros, the seed of Yah, yet for a time we are hidden. That the enemy cannot find us, Yisraya. Don't you? I'm pretty sure through the news you hear of the turmoil of the things that is taking place throughout the world. And don't you know that even in the midst of the, even in the midst of that, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a condition somewhere. But even yet, the hands of Almighty Yahweh and His Melikim are camp around those that fear Almighty Yahweh. So let us be thankful even in that knowledge condition of Yahweh. And it says this, and counted them happy for not having suffered. And we're thankful, and we're thankful that your Kadesh ones, though previously wronged, it says, were doing them no injury. And they begged their pardon for having been, having been at variance with them. Therefore, you did provide a flaming pillar a fire as a guide for your people's unknown journey. There's a flaming pillar of fire, and that fire is Yahshua, Hamashiach. And that same fire should be shut up in our lives, in our hearts, condition of Yahweh, even in our bones. And a harmless sun for their magnificent wandering. For their enemies deserve to be deprived of the light. And in prison in the darkness. Don't you know that the world are enemies? Hallelujah. Don't you know that? To be a friend of the world, Scripture says, is to be an enemy of Yahweh. But it says that the enemies, the world, deserve this darkness. Why? Because the bondage and the suffering, the billions they put upon the house of Israel. These who had kept your sons in prison through whom the imperishable light of the Torah was to be given unto the world, or unto the Olam. Yeah. So even at this time, Yisrael, Yahweh has given us the Torah. He has given us Yahshua HaMashiach. He has not given it unto our enemies. For they deny him. They reject him, even his name. They reject Yahshua HaMashiach, his son. So that is why the world is in so much turmoil. And if you're walking in this route, uh, that's why you feel or you're being impressed even upon what's happening in the Olam. We should be observant, Yisrael, 
Sure, we're going to be tried because we're in the wilderness. But yet we should be thankful unto Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because he has given us his light, Yahshua HaMashiach. He has given us his Torah of fire that shall lead us and shall guide us. And as long as we follow that conditions of Yahweh, house of Yisrael, we will be kept under the wings of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. So why should we be cast down? Why should we enter into the bite of Yahweh with our countenance fallen? When, even when you awaken, before you awaken, he was looking and peering down upon you, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And a soft, gentle voice, he said to rise, get up. Oh, sure, you may, you may think you just popped up out of the bed or you, you, you look at the clock and you want to stay 10, 15 more minutes and you fall off to sleep. But it is Yahweh that has waking you up this morning. Hallelujah. It is Yahweh that has given you the movement in your limbs. So let's give toll out unto Yahweh. For Kol, for all that he has done, Yisrael. Hallelujah. 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 I really don't know where this message is going to lead us as far as scripture. But we know one thing for sure, that it will lead us in the right path. It's going to lead us in the way of Almighty Yahweh. So just bear with me tonight. I want to encourage us, conditions of Yahweh. Because if we allow what is going on around us, if we take heed to that, it will engulf us. It will overcome us. So let us latch hold to the only thing we really have, and that is the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Not so much it being written in these these in the papers of, of the books of the Torah in which we study, but it should be engrafted in our left. Yahweh has put it there. Hallelujah. And that's all that we're going to have in these last days. Turn with me to, to Tehillim, chapter 95, verse 1. I want to read some psalms unto us, Kedusha. For what man in Torah has understood the compassion of Almighty Yahweh, his long suffering? More than Dawid. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And even in his circumstances, he knew that he had transgressed the Torah of Yahweh. He sinned against Almighty Yahweh. Okay. Yet he was able, through all of his trials and the repercussions of his sin, yet he gave Torah on to Almighty Yahweh in the situation with his enemies were fast upon him, there was those that mocked him, yet he gave told out unto Almighty Yahweh, and he was thankful. So I want to read some songs, so just bear with me tonight, conditions of Yahweh. He says, come, Psalms 95 verse 1, oh come, let us sing unto Yahweh, let us make a joyful noise unto the rock, the rock, the sure foundation, cannot be moved. It says, the rock of our salvation. Hallelujah. It's not Yahshua, a rock, a sure foundation, on which the house of Israel, the Torah of Yahweh, has been built upon. So let us sing told our songs unto Almighty Yahweh and make a joyful noise. A joyful noise. A noise that can be heard, Israel. No, not us tiptoeing into the bite of Yahweh and getting on our knees. But with a loud voice unto Almighty Yahweh. He says, let us come before his presence. Do you believe you're in the presence of Almighty Yahweh? His presence? Have you ever been in the presence of a state trooper or a police officer? Isn't that something how the flesh or just naturally there's a reverence there because of his authority? You know what he can do? You know what he has been charged to do? So let us come before the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, giving told out unto Yahweh, and make a joyful noise unto him with what? With song. A joyful sound unto Almighty Yahweh. For Yahweh, he is God, he is great and mighty, and a great king. It says above all gods. Yahweh is above all gods. No matter what you may try to place before him, he's still above that. 
no matter what the world and this corrupt whore of the religious factor have tried to teach Israel, Yah, yet Yahweh, he's above all. He's above all. Verse 4, and his hand, in his hands are, deep, are the deep places of the earth. In his hands? Can you phantom or imagine that, that in his hands, in the palm of his hands, are the deep places of the earth? The strength of the hills is also his. When you look at the mountains and the height of those mountains and the strength, that's a sign of strength, the mountains. Even the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Not only did it form the dry land, Yisrael, but his hands formed us. But did not we come out of the earth? Did not he mold us and make us, Yisrael? He says, oh, come. When you're enjoying something that is, that is dear to your heart, and that is, if I may say, delicious, that excites the palate of your taste buds, doesn't it make you want to say, mm? Yeah. Oh, that is so wonderful. Yes, it is. Oh, that is tough. Yeah. He says, oh, come. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before Yahweh, our maker. When was the last time we kneeled before Almighty Yahweh? When was the last time, Kedushim, Yisrael, Yah, that we bow upon our knees, what I live, humble unto Almighty Yahweh? He says, for Yahweh is our almighty, and we are the people of his pasture. We're the people of his pasture. What happens when you look at the pasture and you see the animals out there? Don't it seem like they have so much shalom? They have no worries. Everything they need, even when it seems like the grass by the side of the eye is just not enough, yet there's still just enough. When it seems that the water is dried up, yet Yahweh provides water. That's what the pastures is for. So we are the people of his pasture. He provides everything that we need, Yisrael. There's no reason for us to complain. There's no reason for us to doubt Almighty Yahweh. Because he will take care of us. He will keep us, Yisrael. For we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. He says, today, if you will shema, if you will hear his voice. Do you hear the voice of Almighty Yahweh tonight? Hallelujah. Do you hear Yahweh speaking to us from his Torah, from his Mishra, Yisrael? Why are we cast down? Why should we complain? Is there space for us to murmur? Do we not see the house of Yisrael when they came out of Mizraim into the wilderness? What happened when they murmured and complained? And really, they had no reason. It's only that they were used to the things that they had in Egypt, in Mizraim. We need to cut off all the connections, Yisrael, to Mizraim and to Egypt. Verse 9. He says, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation. Yahweh endured. He was patient. He was grieved, he gave, he took from this generation and said, it is a people that do error in their love and they have not known my ways. We have not known the ways of Almighty Yahweh because this church entity has ingrained us, have taught us. Quote, unquote, Jesus Christ. That's what they gave unto us. Did not give us Yahshua HaMashiach. Who gave us Yahshua HaMashiach? Only Almighty Yahweh. His hand has been upon his house through turmoil, through, tr through trials, through slavery. Through it all, Yahweh has kept his house, Yisrael. Forty years long have I been agreed with this generation. And said, it is a people that do err in the live, and they have not known my ways. To whom I swore in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Don't you know Yahweh, he was at that tilting point whereby he would have damned 
Yisra'ya, if it wasn't for Moshe standing and pro, pro, reminding him what he said that he would do. And that he had to hold fast unto what he said. Why? Because it would give the heathen room to mock Yah. Do we give the heathen a reason to mock Almighty Yahweh today? How strong are we as a house and as, as a nation, Israel? Yah? Hallelujah. Do we give the heathen reason to mock Almighty Yah? Chapter 96, verse 1. Back to praising Yahweh again. Even in that, we should give praises unto Yahweh. Because even in our ignorance, his hand was upon us. Even though we fell short, his hand was upon us. His Torah was there to redeem us, Yisrael. Psalms 96, verse 1. Oh, sing praises unto Yahweh, all the Olam. Sing to Yahweh and Barak, his almighty name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Do we for, show forth the salvation of Almighty Yahweh from day to day? Do we show forth in the way that we live, in the way that we walk, in the way that we carry ourselves, that the Ruach of Yahshua HaMashiach dwells in our bodies? Declare his splendor among the heathen, his wonders among all the people. For Yahweh, he is great and greatly to be Hallelujah, to be praised. He is to be feared among all the gods. For the gods of the nations are idols. Don't you know all the gods, all the kings of the nations, they are just idols, temporary. They place the, the buildings and monuments of gold and of stone and of concrete as their maker or their creator. They are idols. But Yahweh, he made the Shemayim. Only Yahweh made the Shemayim. Don't be fooled by what we call science or evolution. It's just all a lie. It's a trick of the enemy, Yisrael. Yeah. Yahweh made the Shemayim. Grandeur and magnificence are before him. Strength and beauty are in his bayat. Yeah. It's in his bayat. Strength and beauty are in Yahweh's bayat. Give unto Yahweh. What should we give unto Yahweh? What do we have to give unto Yah? Is it monies? Things are tight. Is it wealth? Is it the lands or the home? What, to, what can we give on, on, unto Almighty Yahweh, knowing that he has done all these things for Yisrael? Yah? Can we repay him? What does he ask? What does he ask for? What does he require? Will it be enough to please his nephews? Yes. What he requires and what he asks of us, Yisrael, which isn't much, to please him, to make him happy, to send up a sweet-smelling savor unto his nostrils, that he would be pleased with the house of Yisrael. Give unto Yahweh, O you kindreds of the people, give unto Yahweh honor. We must give Yahweh honor. Honor. You think about that. What do we give honor to? What do we have respect for? Do we have that unto Almighty Yahweh? And it should be even more in abundance unto Almighty Yahweh. He says to give unto Yahweh honor and strength. Strength. Well, how do I give Yahweh strength, Zakain? Well, you give him your life. You give him every breath. Everything that you put your hands to, you give it unto Almighty Yahweh. Your labor should be an offering unto Almighty Yahweh. For even in your labor do you show forth your thankfulness. How do you labor, house of Yisrael, amongst one another? Scripture says that we should know them that labor amongst us. Hallelujah. Give unto Yahweh, O you kindred of the people. Give unto Yahweh honor and strength. Give unto Yahweh the honor that is due unto his name. Bring an offering. Have we brought an offering tonight? What do we have to offer unto Almighty Yahweh? Bring an offering and come into his courts. Have we not come into the courts of Yahweh tonight, Israel? Hallelujah. He says to all worship Yahweh in verse 9, chapter 96. A worship Yahweh in the beauty of 
Kodesh. You know, that is one thing that the world has scarred, is the Kodesh, or the pureness of Almighty Yahweh. For you even to dress in a Kodesh manner, the world mocks that. The world mocks it. They don't make fun at you. You become an eyesore amongst the wicked. If you don't think that the way you dress is, is very important conditions of Yahweh, to be set apart from the styles, if I may say, of the world, then, then you, you're wrong. It makes a statement, Yisrael Yah. And the world has corrupt the beauty of being Kodesh. Or worship Yahweh in the beauty of Kodesh. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that Yahweh reigns. To the world also be established that it shall not be moved. It is established by Almighty Yahweh. And it is not going to be moved unless Almighty Yahweh moves it. He shall judge the people, Sadiq, in righteousness. Let the Shemayans rejoice. Let the earth be glad and let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice. Can you imagine that? Don't you know that the world, the mountains, what we see around us, the trees, all those things obey Yahweh at his command. The trees that worship Yahweh, they obey his every command. In the fall time, they drop the leaves, the ones that drop the leaves. In the springtime, you see them bring forth their leaves. They bear fruit. It's still in the same order as it has been even from the very beginning. So just by their obedience, it brings honor unto Almighty Yahweh. And they do it continuously. What do we as a house have to offer unto Yahweh? Do we bring forth our fruit in due season? Do our leaves wither in times of drought? Most of the trees we remove. In our tree service are trees that are dying. Those that drop their leaves. You look at the trees, you see the, the sickness and how they're just slowly wiltering away. So in order, what we do, we cut them down that it'll be safety, that it doesn't fall upon any property or hurt anyone. That's our responsibility as being a tree service. But yet... Where do we, as we look at the house of Israel, what do we fit in this pattern? Are we a people that produce the fruits that are needed? Our leaves, are they still green yet in the time of drought? Are we as the tree that is planted by that river of living water, the stream of Yahshua HaMashiach, that we bear for our fruit in due season? Israel, y'all. Verse 6. It says, the Shemayams declare his righteousness. Do we declare the righteousness of Almighty Yahweh? Do we come with our lips open and our mouths open unto Almighty Yahweh, that we send up a, a sound of rejoicing and of praise? He means that, conditions of Yahweh. He means for us to make a loud noise. Not to be ashamed to proclaim his name. Hallelujah. He said, confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols and worship, worship them, all you gods. Worship him, all you gods. Verse 8. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Yehuda, they rejoiced, they rejoiced, of your judgments, Almighty Yahweh. Do we rejoice in the judgments of Almighty Yahweh? You know, many times it seems that we, in tough times, when there's times of plenty, times of much, there should be times of rejoicing. But it also should be the same rejoicing when things are, are slack. Conditions of Yahweh. The judgments of Yahweh. When Yahweh judge us, there should be a told out unto Almighty Yahweh. Not us walking with our heads down, knowing that he is control of all things, Kedusha. You know, it's more than this thing that we have learned from the heathen. We, we're going to have to erase that completely. We should have the, re, the rejoicing and the reassurance in Yahshua HaMashiach and knowing that his ruah is within us. That should be enough alone. Because the Torah says they're not, 
the Ruach of Yahweh? Did it not raise Yahshua from the, from the grave, from the stone, from death? Well, it's going to take that same Ruah from Israel. We must have that. For if that same Ruah that raised Yahshua from the dead, the dead, if it dwells in us, then it should quicken us. Quicken our understanding. Strengthen our immune our condition of y'all, that we may stand in this generation. In this generation. There seems to be so much going on. We haven't seen anything yet. So what do our insurance lie on? What do we give to that unto Yahweh? Are we thankful in what is happening? Not only with what's going around us, Yisrael, but what's happening right here in the house. What is happening in our lives. Do we understand what Yahweh is doing? For you, O Yahweh, are high above all the Olam. You are exalted far above all gods. And it says here in 97 verse 10 of Tehillim, You that are high of Yahweh hate evil. Hate evil. You must assure, you must hate evil, you must put it away. Do not be partakers of evil. You that are Hava Yahweh, do a Hava Yahweh? We profess it with our mouths that we are Hava Yahweh. But do we hate evil? Do we hate the things that despise Almighty Yahweh, the things that dwell in us, that are there? Do we hate those things? He preserves the nephesh, the souls of his Kodesh Kodeshums. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is shown for the righteous. Did not we read that earlier? That light was shown for those who Yahweh had deemed righteous. And gladness for the upright in love. Are we glad tonight, Kodesh of Yahweh? If we are upright in love, if we're walking in the Torah, as Yahweh has commanded us, that we would be a nation, we would be a people that will have the joy and the gladness of Almighty Yahweh bubbling, overflowing out of our nephesh. Yeah. Verse 12. Rejoice in Yahweh, O you righteous, and give Todah at the remembrance of his Kodeshness. Just at the remembrance of all his righteous and his mighty acts that he has done for us, Yisrael. We can look back on our past lives and see what Yahweh has done, but you can just look at what he has done for you today. Yeah. What he has done for you that past, this past hour. What he has done for you the past moment, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Chapter 98, verse 1. We're still in Tehillim. A song. He says to all, oh, sing unto Yahweh a new song. What is that? Is it coming up with new lyrics or New things to sing unto Yahweh. In part, that's true. But it's having the life that, if I can express it unto us, Yisrael, Yah, it never grows old. His Ruach never grows old. His Ahava, it never grows old. It's always new unto him. It's always new. Every breath is a new breath, Yisrael, Yah. So we should bring a new song, a new told of praise unto Almighty Yahweh. For he has done marvelous things. Has he not done marvelous things beyond our understanding, Israel? His right hand and his Kodesh arm has gotten him the victory. Hallelujah. Don't you know that's what gives us the victory? That what enables us to excel upon every trial and every situation, every mountain, Israel. Yahweh's strong arm, his outstretched hand. He said, Yahweh has made known his salvation. Has he not made known Yahshua HaMashiach unto us? His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the heathen. Even when we were in that heathen state, yet his righteousness was shone upon us. Don't you, have you ever been, even when we it was in sin, condition of Yahweh, don't you know there were those moments where Yahweh just got your attention, you just knew that it was some, some power that, you didn't understand exactly what it was, but you knew there was a power, there was one that was watching over you. Some people want to say there was a Melikim. My Melikim watched over me. But it was just Yahweh. It was just Yahweh that preserved us, Yisrael, Yah. Verse 3 of chapter 98 to Helium. He has remembered his mercies. I brought Yahweh for that, that he remembered his mercies. And his truth towards the house of Yisrael, Yah. 
All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of Almighty Yahweh. Make a joyful noise unto Yahweh. All the earth. All Israel. A joyful noise. It says make a loud noise. Even your loudest is not loud enough. But if you give Yahweh your all, he is pleased in that, Yisrael. If you give Yahweh all your love, all your mind, and all your strength, and all the breath he has given you, it will be pleasing unto him. And rejoice and sing praises unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. So this is not something that we just amongst the house that we, you know, we want to show out or we want to, you know, if I may say, put on. But this is something that should flow out of us freely. All the time. Not just in the bayet. But we're, when we're not in the bayet of Almighty Yahweh. We're not under a roof. When you're by yourself. I, I was thinking about that today when I was out. And I'm going to try not to bear, bear any tears because this is of Yahweh, but it's those times when you're, it seems like you're alone and you're by yourself that it seems, to me it seems this way, that I, I can find my, the closeness unto Almighty Yahweh. Because if it wasn't for the Dhamma Yahshua Hamashiach, I wouldn't be here today. Hallelujah. And I told you, Yahweh, for every experience that I have experienced in my young life to even bring me to the place where I am today. I could look back and see a little maturity, how step by step Yahweh has guided me, how he has led me. Because if we're led by our flesh, if we allow our flesh conditions of Yahweh to lead us, it's going to damn us. And we are going to be consumed by the enemy. But because of the mighty hand of Yahweh, and because of his outstretched arm, hallelujah, that's the only reason why I'm standing here today. Hallelujah. I don't desire riches. It's not my desire to have cars or anything. My only desire is to please Almighty Yah. For what else do we have as a people? What else do we have to lean on? What else is this life? What else does it, it, does it what is life worth living? There's a song that we're singing, that we're practicing. It's a beautiful song, Kedushin of Yahweh. But what is it to gain the whole world if we could gain the whole world? And we can amass everything. The pleasures of this life, pleasing the flesh, which the flesh cannot be pleased. But to gain the whole world and lose your soul, to lose your nephesh is meaningless. The only meaning that we have and the only light and life that we have in these vessels is the dom, is the life of Yahshua HaMashiach. And for that alone, I am thankful. For I know that that will keep me, even in time of drought and in time of famine, that the Torah of Almighty Yahweh that has been engraved in my left, that is engraved in the left of Yisrael, it will keep us. So let us be thankful, house of Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let us give toda unto Almighty Yahweh. Make a joyful noise to Yahweh, all you earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praises. Sing unto Yahweh with the heart. With the heart and with the voice of songs, of praises, of singing, melody out of your left. With trumpets, the shofar, and the sound of the shofar, make a joyful noise before Yahweh, the King. Hallelujah. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof, the world, and all that is that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands, and let the hills be joyful all together before Yahweh for he comes to judge the Olam with righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity yeah. chapter 99 verse 1 Yahweh reigns let the people tremble he sits between the cherubim 
Let the earth be moved. Yahweh, he is great in Zion. And he is high above all the people. Do we set Yahweh high, O Zion? Do we set him in our forefront? Let them praise your great and fearful name, for it is Kodesh. The king's strength also loves judgment. You do establish equity. You execute judgment and righteousness in Yaakov. Exalt you, Yahweh, our Almighty, and worship at his footstool, for he is Kodesh. Yahweh is Kodesh, Yisrael. Yahweh is not going to accept anything that is corrupt. Our offerings, our praises, our life unto Yahweh must be Kodesh. Verse 6, Moshe and Aharon among his Kodeshims, and Samuel among them that call upon his name. They call upon Yahweh, and he answered them. Don't you know Yahweh, if you call upon him out of a pure love, that he will answer you, Yisrael? He says, you answer them, O Yahweh, our Almighty. You are a Almighty One that forgave them. Don't you know Yahweh has forgiven us, Yisrael? Of all of our sins, all of our transgressions, all of our iniquities. Hallelujah. The Dhamma of Yahshua has washed us clean. Though you took vengeance of their interventions. And what that is, he took vengeance upon our iniquity and our sins, our transgressions, our rebelliousness unto Almighty Yahweh. That's what that means, their interventions. He says, to exalt Yahweh your Almighty and worship at his Kodesh hill. For Yahweh our Abba is Kodesh. To Helium 100, verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto Yahweh, O you lands. Serve Yahweh with gladness. Do we serve Yahweh with gladness? Come before his presence with singing. Know you, Yada, know you that Yahweh, that he is the sovereign ruler. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and it shares the sheep of his pasture. Enter to his gates with Todah with thanksgiving, and enter to his core with praises, and be thankful unto him, and barak his name. Hallelujah. 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 You cannot barak Yahweh's name enough. Yeah. I know this is a cliche that the church world has used many a times, but if we had a thousand tongues, we could not praise him enough. Yeah. So let us not wish upon a thousand tongues. But let us praise Yahweh with that which he has given us. He gave us one tongue. Hallelujah. So all that lies within your love, conditions of Yahweh. Barak Yahweh. Praise Yahweh for his mercy endures forever. His Ahava, it endures forever. So let us give toad out unto Yahweh. Even when things seem bleak, and it seems like there's no way out. We know that Yahweh, he makes a way out of no way. Give toda unto him. Hallelujah. In your trials, in your circumstances. Should we not give toda our praise unto Yahweh in some things? What's that? All things. Does he mean all things are just in good times, if I may say? When things are going our way. No, but also in the famine. In the trying time, should we give Toda unto Almighty Yahweh? And even at that, he would give us the strength. He's not going to put on you, Yisrael, no test or no trial that you cannot bear. Don't you know if you got him in your bosom, that the enemy cannot stop you? There's no trial that will stop you. There's no situation that will slow you down. Hallelujah. Let us have the Ruach of Yahweh and his name continuously in our mouths. Hallelujah. For that is our strength, Yahweh, conditions of Yahweh. Verse 5. For Yahweh is tough, and his mercy is everlasting. Everlasting. Can you comprehend something that's everlasting? There's nothing that man put his hands on or make that is everlasting. But Yahweh, his mercy is everlasting. And not only that, but his truth, it endures to all generations. It endures. 
Do you have the truth of Almighty Yahweh locked up in your bosom? Yes, right, y'all. Hallelujah. That we don't allow the enemy to steal. For he comes forth as a roaring lion seeking who, to, who he may devour. Not only that, but to steal and to kill. That's what the enemy goes for. That's what he does. But yet, if we will guide or if we will hide Yahweh's love, I mean Yahweh's Torah, in our hearts, we'll be able to endure all things. For his Torah endures all things. Hallelujah. Told of Yahweh. Isn't there so much as for you, you know, just, just thank Yahweh. Give Toda unto Yahweh. Don't let it be a cliche, Toda or Toda Yah. But let it come from the essence that is within you, knowing what Yahweh has done for you, Yisrael Yah. Turn me to Romans, Romeo chapter 1, verse 18. Hallelujah. It says in Romans chapter 1, verse 18, concerning the wrath of Almighty Yahweh, but yet there is comfort. For the wrath of Yahweh is revealed from the Shemayan against all wickedness and unrighteousness of men, Yahweh's judgments, who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh has known it, has shown it to them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the Olam are clearly seen, Israel, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and the essence of Yahweh, so that they are without excuse. We are without excuse. Yeah. Seeing if we just take the time to look around us and our everyday endeavors, we see the, the hand of Almighty Yahweh. We know that he has done all these things. So we are without excuse, Yisrael, Yah. Because that, when they knew Yahweh, when we knew Yahweh, they magnified and honored him not as Almighty Yahweh. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart were darkened. Wasn't there a time when we were in darkness, because of Yahweh? Don't you know if you still deny Yahweh's Torah, his truth, even seeing all that he has done, the creation of the Olam, the sea, the luminary, the stars, the sun. It's because we have a foolish heart. Verse 22, it says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Because we have denied all the things that Yahweh has done. We have seen it, we have encountered it, we see it around it in our everyday endeavors. If we deny that Yahweh has done these things, then we are in darkness, Kedushas of Yahweh. We have been blinded by the enemy. Let us move on. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. The Ahava of Yahweh and us being forbearing one another and having the Ahava of Yahweh. Hallelujah. It says, to put on therefore... As the elect of Almighty Yahweh. What should we put on? Shouldn't our garments be clean and white? Conditions of Yahweh. No longer having these filthy garments, but putting on a garment of pure white. As the elect of Yahweh, Kodesh and beloved, bowels of mercies. Do we have that? Bowels of mercies. Kindness. It says humbleness, but not only that, humbleness of mind. Meekness, long-suffering. We must put on these things, because this is of Yahweh. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. It says, if any man have a quarrel against any, even, excuse me, even as Yahshua HaMashiach has forgiven us, so also do you. And above all these things, put on Ahava, put on love which is the bond of, what does it say? Perfectness? What is that? It's, if you may imagine a sphere or a round, a ball, a glass ball, even 
as man has tried to make objects perfect, still in the eyes of Yahweh, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. Only Yahweh make things perfect, conditions of Yah. So in this bond of Ahava, in this bond that we should have conditions of Yahweh, do we find the completeness of Almighty Yahweh in his Ahava? Hasn't he shown his Ahava among, among us, Yisrael, Yah? Hallelujah. Has he not tanned our backsides? Does he not show us our wrong? Does he not reprove us? That is the Ahava of Yahweh, the judgment of Yahweh. That is the Ahava of Yahweh. And in that do we find the bond of perfectness. He says, to let, and let the shalom of Yahweh rule in your land. Have we weaved in that sometimes? The shalom of Yahweh, let it rule. What does it mean when something rules? It has the power or it reigns above all things. There's nothing that can overthrow it. There's nothing that can set it down. It says, let the shalom of Yahweh, of Almighty Yahweh, rule in your land, to the which also you are called in one body. And what does it say there? What's that, uh, Yosef? And be you thankful. Thankful unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Turn with me to, okay, let's continue in Colossians. Got two more verses here. 16. Let the word of Yahshua HaMashiach dwell in you richly and in all wisdom. We must let the word of Almighty Yahweh, of Yahshua HaMashiach, is he not the word? Hallelujah. So he must dwell in our lives richly, and not only that, but in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and in Hallel, praises and spiritual songs, songs in the Ruah, singing with the free unmerited pardon in your lives unto Yahweh. So even singing about how Yahweh, even how wretched we were that he pulled us out of the mire and out of the muck, conditions of Yahweh, and his unmerited pardon, his Ahava was set upon us still, yet in, even in our filth he washed us, we laid in our own blood, destitute, dying, weak, yet he cleansed us in the dome of Yahshua HaMashiach, yeah. and he pardoned all of our sins, conditions of Yah. Yeah. Verse 17. And whatsoever you do, in word or in deed, do it all in what? The name of Yahshua. And all we do, conditions of Yahweh. Giving what? Giving what? I want everybody to say it. And giving thanks. thanks. Toda. Why is that so hard for us to do? Come on, conditions of Yahweh. Come on now. And giving Toda thanks unto Yahweh our Abba by him. Through Yahshua HaMashiach, we give Toda. Because of Yahshua HaMashiach, we give Toda unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. There's um, an account in Jubilees that um, I do want to read. And you're not going to have this... Um, in the Torah that, that many of you may be holding. But this is concerning um, the period in Jubilees whereby anything that was taken would be restored. It's a time of restoration. And it was a time of rejoicing when the so far was to be sounded. We do not see the examples so much in this time because even in Jubilees, it talks about a time when there was this year of restoration. And slowly it began to fade, whereby there were not the Jubilees and man did not live the years in the fullness. And this was a time where there was a, a restoration. There must be a restoration to the house. We need a Jubilee where the things that we have lost have been taken from the house of Israel will be restored once again. 
Yahweh talks about how the palmer worm and the canker worm and those things have devoured the essence or the strength of those things that should preserve the house of Yisrael. But yet he promised that he would restore all those things. Hallelujah. So let us look for the restoration. Well, what is that? Where is that restoration? It's the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach, where all things will be restored unto the house of Yisrael. So I'm going to begin reading here. It says... For all have done evil, and every mouth speaks iniquity of their works, and uncleanness and the abominations. And all their ways are pollution and uncleanliness and destruction. If you just think about what we see around us, all we see is uncleanliness, pollution, how the world has been destroyed, destruction. Behold the world, the Olam, shall be destroyed on account of all their works. And there should be no seed of the vine and no oil, for all the works are all together faithless. And they shall all perish together, the beasts and the cattle and the birds and the fish of the sea and account of the children of man. And if we just look, this is happening in this hour. Fish dying because of how man, how we have polluted the old lamb. They don't care what they dump into the oceans. Even these news clips of what you hear, things, you know, accounts happening, those things happen all the time. They're things that we just don't hear about. The accounts of how the fish, different species of fish, are just wiped out or dying. It's because of the sin of man. But there's a time that Yahweh, he's going to restore all this. Hallelujah. And they, shall, and they shall strive one with another, the young with the old. We see that today. The old with the young, the poor with the rich, and the lowly with the great. And the beggar with the prince on the account of, it says, the Torah and the covenant. For they have forgotten the commandments and the covenant and the feasts and the months, the Shabbats and the Jubilees and all judgments. And we as a nation, we have forgotten. We've forgotten all these things. It's only by... Yahweh leading his messengers to teach us and to show us and to restore these, these jubilees and um, the times, the judgments, and the Shabbats, and the months, and the feasts, because those things have been lost amongst the house of Israel. Y'all. And we have a responsibility by the Ruach of Yahshua HaMashiach to teach these things, to learn, to study, that we can reveal these things unto the house of Israel, y'all. because all the feasts and the jubilees of Yahweh, they're very important to the house, or to Yisrael. And those things who have, I'm sorry, and those who have escaped shall not return from their wickedness to the way of righteousness, but shall all exalt themselves and to deceit and wealth, and they may each take all that is the neighbor's. And they shall name, and they shall name the great name of Yahweh, but not in truth. See, and if you look at the world, the rich just take. That's all they do. They take from the poor. And then they try to hide themselves under a cloak, but it's not the cloak of Almighty Yahweh. But not in the truth and not in righteousness. And they defile the Kodesh of the Kedushim with their uncleanness and the corruptions of their pollution. Don't, don't we see that? If you just look back and look, just look at the things that we have been polluted with. The things that have been embedded deep in our lives, Yisrael. But there's coming a time, and the time is now. The time is now at hand that Yahweh shall restore all things, all the feast days. All these things shall be be um, given back unto the house of Yisrael. And great punishment shall befall the deeds of this generation from Yahweh, and He will give them over to the sword and to judgment and to captivity and to plunder and to be devoured. And Yahweh will wake up against them, the sinners of the Gentiles, who have neither mercy nor compassion. This world has no mercy. The world has no compassion, not even amongst themselves. And we know they're not going to have it until the house of Israel, because we know the world, they hated Yahshua, did they not? So they hate us also. Hallelujah. I'm bringing this to a close. Just bear with me, because this is of Yah. So the Yah. And who shall respect the persons of none, neither old nor young, nor anyone, 
For they are wicked and strong to do evil than the children of men. And they shall use violence against Israel and transgressions against Jacob, and much blood shall be shed upon the old lamb. And there shall be none to gather and none to bury. In those days shall they cry aloud and call and pray that they may be saved from the hands of the sinners or the Gentiles. But none shall be saved. And the hands of the children shall be white. And the heads of the children shall be white with gray hair. And the children of three weeks shall appear old and like a man of a hundred years. Now this more, you got to listen to more than just what it's saying. Because if, if, you, if you'd be led by the flesh when you're reading this, then you would think. That there's more to it than just what we're reading because this is Yahweh. And, and hopefully I, I can be able to expound on this just a little. Let me continue. And, and their stature shall be destroyed by tribulation and oppression. And in those days shall the children begin to study the Torah and to seek the commandments and to return to the paths of righteousness. Now, what this is um, exclaiming to us concerning um, the young or the children studying the Torah and being of great head, it's showing the essence of the wisdom of even a young generation as Yahweh begins to restore the house back into his rightful place. And that's somewhat where we are as a house. We're young, we're still yet, if I may say, new. But yet, Yahweh, he will allow his wisdom to encamp the house of Yisrael. So as I read on to these last um, few verses that I bring this to a close, we're going to see how Yahweh is going to restore the house of Yisrael. So we have much to be thankful for, Yisrael. And to seek the commandments and to return unto the paths of righteousness. And those days shall, bring, shall begin to grow, and many be, begin to grow many, and increase amongst those children of men, till their days draw nigh to a thousand years. And to the greater number of years than before was the number of those days. And there shall be no old man nor one who is satisfied with his days or come to an end. For all, for all shall be as children and youths, and all their days shall be complete and living in shalom and in joy. Don't we desire that conditions of Yahweh? That we live shalom, in shalom, and in ahava, love and joy? And there shall be no Satan or no enemy, nor any evil destroyer, for all those days shall be the days of blessing and of healing, jubilees, restoration unto Yahweh, where all things will be given back unto the hands of Yisrael. And at that time, Yahweh will heal his servants, and they shall rise up in, in great shalom and drive out their adversaries, and the righteous shall see and be thankful and rejoice with joy forever and ever. And shall see all their judgments and all the curses on their enemies. And their bones shall rest in the Olam, and their Ruach shall have much joy. And they, and they shall know that Yahweh, who executes judgments, also shows mercy to hundreds and thousands and to all that are hava him. Do we all hava Yahweh? Do we barak Yahweh? Are we thankful unto Almighty Yahweh? Hallelujah. My last verse. And do you, Moshe, write down these words. And these are the words. For thus they are written. These have been established. And recorded them on the heavenly tablets for a testimony for the generations forever. So even these last scriptures that I read, they are written. This is of Yahweh. This is the house of Israel coming into the fullness of restoration. Hallelujah. Of all things, all things, back unto the house. You know, we as a people, we possess so much. But it's just so much that we do not yet understand and do not know. But by the Ruach HaKadosh of Almighty Yahweh and by his preachers, his, the teachers, those that are found upon the Torah of Yahweh, by his Ruach, it will lead us to the of Yahweh. As they say, to higher heights and deeper depths. Yes. 
and Yahweh Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. So be thankful. Give told out unto Almighty Yahweh. Because Yahweh, he's in control. He's in control of everything. Hallelujah. And I brought Almighty Yahweh for that. Let us stand to our feet, conditions of Yahweh. Hallelujah. We do total all of Yahweh. So as we awaken, as we lie down tonight, and, and as we awaken in the morning, as the song says, until the morning, until the noonday, until the rising or the setting of the sun, yeah. is Yahweh's name worthy to be praised. Yeah. Let us turn unto Yahushalayim. Abba Yahweh, we do told you for this midday scripture truth, Abba Yahweh. Yeah. As you have just reminded us, Abba Yahweh, of all the mighty things you have done unto Yisrael. And we just want to simply say tonight, as we are standing, Abba Yahweh, as we are facing New Yerushalayim, we just want to say, Toda. Thank you, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Toda, Yahweh, for all that you have done, for all that you're doing, Abba Yahweh, and for all that you are going to do. We do ask Yahweh that you will take all the conditions that have traveled from there and from afar, those that have listened tonight by via of live stream, that you, have, that you will encourage Yahweh to live tonight, to just press on and to give you told out in every situation and for all things. And in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, do we close tonight and we declare it with a hearty hallelujah, 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 Yahweh, hallelujah. Yahweh Barak Yahweh, conditions of Yahweh, hallelujah.